I haven't done that in a while. Clapped in. Because we're recording on the microphone as well as the lav. Audio for streamers is super important and I'd probably argue the case that it's the most important thing. I'd rather watch a great sounding video with subpar quality video than subpar audio with the sharpest videos ever. Now on the desk today I've got the Rockat Torch and it's Rockat's first iteration I'm pretty sure into standalone gaming microphones and what they've come up with is pretty decent looking and it's such a simple solution. So let's dive in what this new microphone has to offer. The whole package when the microphone is attached to the stand sits at around 20 centimeters tall which is more than enough to have the microphone sit close to your mouth while playing games. Now its total width though is a little deceiving as the controller sits at 10 centimeters wide by 13 centimeters deep. Now it's not a lot but it was noticeable if I had the microphone in front of me while I was playing games. However, a solution to that problem is to detach the microphone and have that on a separate boom arm and have the control box sit next to your keyboard. Rockat's branding on the microphone itself is very subtle with the Rockat logo front and center which lights up and some LED strip lighting down the front and back. But that's about it. Build quality is decent around the microphone, nothing feels like it's going to fall off. The grille is metal with plastic detailing and the base plate itself is again made from plastic. The whole thing does have a decent weight to it so if you accidentally knock it around it's not going to fall over. Setup of the Rockat Torch was simple enough. It's mostly plug and play but in the box you do get two lengths of USB Type-C to Type-C depending on your setup. See, the Rockat Torch needs two cables, one of which runs between the control box and the microphone, and one that runs between the control box and PC, which is a traditional USB Type-A cable. It's not a major problem, though surprised Rockat couldn't figure out how to power the microphone if attached to the control box without the need for the second cable. The microphone is on a ball head when on the stand though, so if you need to bend and twist it to aim more towards your mouth, the feature is there. Looking down at the control box itself, the dials and buttons are again very simplified. There are no real bells and whistles around front, and from left to right you've got a pickup pattern dial, a knob for the volume of your headphones, which can be pressed to mute your microphone, and finally a gain slider, all of which feel very plasticky. The pickup pattern dial can sit in one of four positions. Now the first is front and back pickup and displays purple LEDs. The second is for the front only and has orange LEDs. The third adds some extra gain to the front pickup, which is displayed in blue. And the fourth switches the microphone completely off when not being used. The LED lighting effects are actually quite tasteful and are very subtle and actually represent the gain level so you can quickly visualize your gain level without actually looking right down at the control box itself. Around the back you've got a button to change LED brightness between four modes and a switch to change the mute button sensitivity. Now this means that the top mute button can detect different distances so when you wave your hand over it all mutes the microphone. Now this can be switched off completely if you're the type of gamer who sits on top of your microphone or if you wave your hands around a lot. Now I'm the former and I found my actual nose muted my microphone quite often while I was gaming. One big oversight in my eyes is the fact that you can't monitor your own voice through the microphone, well not easily anyway, without using something like uh, third-party software like OBS Studio and even its monitoring feature. Even the Rockat Neon software doesn't turn anything on. The only thing the Neon software does is turn on AMO lighting if you have any kind of Rockat peripherals on your desk. Now, I don't anymore, unfortunately, so it's a feature I couldn't use. Just be aware though that the Neon software is still in beta, so there should be some more features coming later on down the line, but that's still to be seen. Sound quality wise though, it does sound pretty decent. As expected with any kind of condenser style microphone, there can be a lot of background noise due to how sensitive the microphone is, and will probably need some filters added to your OBS or Streamlabs, like a noise gate for example, to get this sounding nice. But tone wise, my voice sounded a little empty and I'm going to switch over to the microphone audio now. So there's no real warmth to the tone of my voice like I can pick up with my Rode Podcaster and Go XLR. Even a Blue Yeti, which is the current go-to for streamers, can produce a warmer tone than this. However, on the flip side, my voice did sound very clear and the microphone did a great job of reducing any background noise coming into it. And though I can class myself as fussy, voice quality is definitely passable when it comes to live streaming. If you're someone who wants that warm, faux, bassy podcast radio voice, then you're going to need to rely on some filters or post-processing to get to where you want to be. Also, avoid banging your desk with your elbows 
When playing, if you've got the microphone on the desk, it picks it up very, very well, even on the lower gain settings. If a mechanical keyboard is placed behind and you're using the front pickup pattern, it does do a good job of reducing audio at the rear. Now, it's not as directional as, say, a dynamic microphone, but I'm happy it did a really good job. So just jumped into some Vermin Tattoo to test out how the microphone will sound when I'm playing video games. I've had to manually adjust the volume on the OBS um, equalizer so uh, the game appears lower than usual. I've got my headphones plugged directly into the control box as well. The microphone's about a hand span, a hand span away from my mouth at the moment. Roughly a hand span and it's slightly leaning backwards to pick up my voice better and aim towards my, vo uh, my voice, my mouth a little bit easier. I've currently got it on the standard pickup pattern, the standard front facing pickup pickup pattern. I've not got a mouse mat, but my mouse is not that close actually to the uh, to the microphone itself anyway. So hopefully you won't hear the uh, mouse scraping or my mechanical keyboard that's sitting behind the mouse as well. For an all-in-one solution, the Rocket Torch is great. It looks pretty smart in my opinion and has a wide enough range of features to get you going on your live streams and offers a clearer voice over your traditional gaming headset microphones. Not having audio pass through on your voice is a bit of a problem for me, though you can use the Windows side tone options to help with that, though there is a slight delay. Why nothing is built into the proprietary app? I'm not too sure, it might be coming in the future, as I said the app is in beta, but I'm not sure again. As I said, if you're someone who wants your voice to sound more podcasty or radio-like straight out of the gate, then this might not be for you. But if you're upgrading your gaming headset or are starting out streaming and want to sound nice and clear when talking to your audiences, it's pretty nice. It cost me around £90 to buy from Amazon, which I think is a pretty good price, and something like the Wave 3 from Elgato, for example, is sitting at around 130 It feels like a no-brainer. Plus, it'll look awesome on your desk as part of your gaming setup. So thank you very much for checking out my review of the Rocket Torch gaming microphone. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos, and also let us know in the comments down below if you are gonna pick up a Rocket Torch yourself or you'd stick to your Blue Yeti, your Elgato Wave, HyperX One, the Razer One, <laughs> all the microphones. As I say, this one is very, very good. I did enjoy my time testing this microphone. It does sound good. Not as bassy as some of the others, but hey, it does have a very clear tone to it. But uh, if you did enjoy this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.